Hello YouTubes, we are back. Uh, this is Grimweird and of course his lovely avatar um, zombie Steve and uh, we are um, because we have some experience built up and because we now have obsidian and diamonds we were going to make an enchantment table and we now have silk touch on our uh, pickaxe, pickaxe so we were going to run and get uh, silk touch some bookshelves for our enchanting table and also we really sort of want to get some uh, blaze powder um, to make our blast furnace so we can start making some steel so I thought I'd uh, check out this desert real quick and see if I could spot any cinder pearls so that I don't have to wander around the nether a bunch when I'm not quite ready for that um, I ran down here and if you'll remember back in episode two or three, three I think it was uh, this um, annoying little village has a couple cockatrice in it um, so I went down there and I sort of knew where they were and I sort of kept an eye on them and I got four bookshelves it's sort of a measly little village so but I, I got the four that I wanted um, and then I thought well hey I'm real close to this desert I'll run over here so I got right about here and got attacked by another damn cockatrice um, and got chased off so I ran north and circled around to here and I've been sort of looking around and now I finally have uh, spotted some cinder pearls down there so we're gonna go grab those so now I'm not only watching for um, for death worms uh, which are another ice and fire monster but now I'm also having to watch for cockatrice in this area unfortunately to make our blast furnace we need uh, nine blast powder and I think these well let's hit you yeah they only make one each um, so we're gonna have to try and find five more uh, but anyway I just thought I'd show you that I'm out here looking around get some elevation maybe wait until dusk they do glow a little so sometimes it's easier to spot them Although I think I see one right about there. And maybe there's some more over the hill. Yeah, this is sort of an ugly mess. Yeah! Whoa! That was terrifying. Still not used to uh, using the sling slime, although it did save my ass from the cockatrice. Five, six. We need three more. Um, it's getting dim out, which will make them easier to see. So we'll get some elevation and see if we can spot any more. Uh -huh. Bing. Doink. like such an idiot bouncing around in these boots. Need to make my glider soon, very soon. It may be getting a bit too dark here. I think I'm going to throw down my bed and try and get some sleep real quick. I'm still just in iron armor, so not really feeling like doing a lot of fighting quite yet. I waited a bit long, so now there's monsters everywhere. But whatevs. While I don't want to do a lot of fighting, it's not like I'm a... Uh, ooh, what's that? I think that might be some uh, nuclear wasteland mutant zombie. Uh, we don't want to be anywhere near that, because I think they might be tough. Um, let's see, cinder pearls, cinder pearls. How many do we got again? Eight. We need one more. Is that one over there? Or is that one of those little cactus? I think that's one of the little cacti. I'm also sort of keeping to the edge of the desert because uh, I'm not sure I can... 
I'm not sure my weapon and stuff is good enough to fight off a death worm quite yet either. So they don't seem to follow you out of the sand. Uh, nope, I'm not seeing anything here. Aha, there's one. Off in the distance. That is excellent news for me, because, um, again, you know, I'm an old vanilla guy, and so I remember when the nether was brand new, and uh, still have those scars. Um, back in the old days, that was sort of a brutal awakening when you went to the nether. And uh, now that I know about it, you know, it's no big deal, really. It's just depending on your uh, zone in, you can zone in surrounded by sea of lava, or you can zone in way underground and then have to, uh, um, you know, dig your way up through uh, possible random lava blocks, and it can just be a pain, and it uh, can be time-consuming, and so I would rather um, concentrate on getting some other things moving. And I'm the kind of person that as soon as I go into the nether, i got to make myself a little fort um, and set everything up. So again, that takes some time. But now we've got uh, enough to make our blaze bricks, I believe. And so we should be set. And we did not die, so that's good. So um, we're going to jump cut here. I'm going to go to the other village and grab some more bookshelves. Um, I think they had enough to round out my 15 bookshelves uh, so I can make my enchantment table. Um, and then we'll come back to the base and make a blast furnace and an enchantment table. I've got to figure out where I'm going to set that up. But anyway, that's what's on the agenda for the rest of this episode. I'm going to snag a couple of these flowers because I think I might need them for dye later. Alright, so I will uh, see you in a few minutes when I... Uh, get the rest of my bookshelves and get back to base. And I'm back, and I made it back from the desert in one piece. I uh, wandered over to the uh, village north of us, uh, got some more bookcases, uh, silk touched them so they're nice in here and intact, and I made my enchantment table, and I'm not really happy with where it is and how things are being laid out here, but I could always pick this up and move it once I actually, you know, set things up. I'll probably have a couple industrial floors and like the magic floors up above. Uh, but I need to, you know, work on layout of the base as I start getting uh, more and more stuff together. Um, but I thought, um, I'm an old school vanilla, as I've said before. And uh, one of the weird things was the, uh, is the enchantment system and how you get those uh, enchantments on stuff. So I wanted to talk a bit about that because I've never actually pe seen people use bookcases in quite this format, and I want to show you why. Not just because it uh, looks interesting and I can shove it in a corner, but there's actual function here that I think is fairly important. Um, so I brought along some things to use as examples, and um, I don't have any books with me, but I, I don't need them for the examples here. So what we're going to do here... I'm sure most of you, if you're watching this, have played enough Minecraft to know how enchantment works. You throw in some lapis, and you um, throw in something that is enchantable. And uh, the top um, thing is 30, and you can get to 30 if you have um, 15 bookcases around it, which I do. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 under there, and 15. Um, so that's all good. They have to be same level or one higher, um, and uh, they have to be one space away from the um, enchanting table. And you can't have anything in between them. And that can't have anything in between them is why I use this setup, and I have never seen anybody else use quite this setup. I've seen people do similar things, but um, so right now we've got the 30 bookcases. I mean, 15 bookcases, we got 30. But um, a lot of your uh, enchantments that you want um, are not 10 or 30, they're somewhere in between. And there are different levels 
in between here that might have different things that you are interested in or you might be able to get away with paying less so for instance protection 3 I'm not going to pay 30 for protection 3 when I know I can probably get it for the low 20s so what I want to do is I want to basically downgrade this list instead of getting 5 10 30 I want to get you know something like says 2 8 and 28 and see what kinds of changes there are here maybe I'm looking for respiration 3 um, and it's going to be somewhere in the middle here so how do we do that uh, pick up our thing so the key thing here is to deactivate X amount of books without like tearing up all your bookcases so I got 15 if I put a torch here it deactivates this bookcase so now this thing thinks it has 14 bookcases and if I take a look at it 28 protection 3 so if I really wanted protection 3 I would now pay less for this enchantment but wait there's more Again, um, the fact that there's only one here on these two cardinal directions, let me do, let me uh, um, deactivate one at a time. So now I've deactivated two, 26, protection three, and I'm getting the same enchantment, but now it's only going to be a 26, so it'll cost me less experience. But wait, there's more. We want to keep walking things down. If I pick these two up, and I want to deactivate three well it just happens that there is three in this corner so if I do that um, we are now deactivating three and 24 now I've got blast protection it has changed um, this may have changed to something I'm interested in like respiration three um, so this is how you sort of sort through things and figure out what you're doing um, what you can get here and get it cheaper um, and so we can just keep that on. You probably get the logic now. So we did one, this added to two, then we got rid of them, and now we're doing three. How are we gonna do four? You guessed it, pick off one of these. Now we're deactivating four, and we're down to 22. Wanna do five, we can add that one, boom. Now we're deactivating five, or we can put one here, and it deactivates all five of these. Um, want to do six no problem we can deactivate five six so that's why you're getting this sort of um, um, weird arrangement and why I have only one here where there's a stack of one here a stack of one here um, there's a total of uh, three in this corner there's five in that corner five in that corner what that allows me to do is tailor this and make sure that I'm paying as little as I need to to um, get the enchantment that I want and also to cycle through the enchantment list to see if there's anything that I want that is less, you know, something less than 30. So then finally, if I am really just looking to change the list, let's say I go through this all and there's no enchantments I want. Well, I'm sort of stuck unless I just enchant something. So what I'll do is I'll just deactivate the crap out of things. And now I'm down to like, you know, only three or so. Um, if I deactivate everything, throw that there and there. Now I'm down to two. And this is the lowest I'm going to get. So now if I don't like anything on the list and I want to cycle the list to see what a new list would look like, what I can do is, um, I guess the hose don't work. Shovel should though. Yeah. So I can just go ahead and for very low cost, um, enchant this shovel with efficiency one. And now I've cycled the list and I've only lost, I've gone from 37 experience levels down to 36. And you're saying, yeah, but what do I do with that shovel? Well, here's another interesting thing. You'll notice if I look at, uh, the Thomcraft um, crucible uh, essence that you get out of this for sacrificing it in a crucible it's got Procatio that little like looks like a magic wand with a star on the end of it or a shooting star or whatever it's supposed to be so what I'll do is I'll just hold on to these and I'll use them in a crucible um, when I need to do 
make that kind of essence. So it's not a complete waste. Not only am I cycling through the list, so now if I open back all the bookshelves back up and throw in the hat again, instead of protection three, I've got soul bound and respiration one. And again, I go through it all. Um, let's say I'm just really dying to get my hands on some respiration three or something like that. Well, you know, there it is. Boom, respiration three. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and take that. There you have it. And I got blast protection four as well. So what I'll do, um, I don't wanna be wearing leather armor and I don't wanna be spending a lot of time making, you know, sub sub tier armor. So when I get to something good, like a flex, flux infused armor or something like that, um, what I can do is there are machines now in all of these mod packs where um, I can take that hat with Respiration 3 and Blast Protection 4 on it and strip those enchantments off onto books and then use those books on some real armor, something that I care about. Um, but now I've used up some of my experience, so if I die, I'm not worried about losing it all. So again, now I can just sort of go through that. At 28, I got Shimmer. Of course, we don't want to spend 28 for Shimmer. Take the torch out. Multi-jump three. If you like multi-jump, that might be something for you. So anyway, I don't want to beat this dead horse too much more, but I just wanted to show you because uh, I still see a lot of people get confused by this. Um, and so if you have are used to um, now uh, mod packs that have lots of ways to enchant and change enchantments and lots of machines like that but are frustrated because those machines are gated and it takes you a long time to get to them if you want to start storing up things that you will be able to suck the enchantments off of and put onto better gear um, this is a way you can go ahead and do it um, and I also like to have a stack of books here um, one of the things, a couple of the things that I'm going to be looking for in particular are Holding 4. I want to get Holding 4 books for my uh, energy cells, my Thermal Foundation energy cells, which are batteries, which can make them hold hundreds of millions of RF. It's ridiculous. They actually, it's actually pretty easy to get them, but that's another one where it's like I have an energy cell, I throw it in there, the top one is something I don't want. But if I downgrade it to 28 or 26, I've found that I can get holding 4 by downgrading to about 26 or so. And so that's another thing to watch for. Anyway, Dead Horse is sufficiently beaten. Um, so just to show you, I've got uh, this corner is stone. So we've got 3 in this corner, 5 in that corner, 5 in that corner and then the one two singles to just take us down one bookcase or two bookcases at a time. That's how I've got this set up. So if you want to try this out, um, I recommend it. And also it shoves nicely into a corner with uh, some movement around it. Makes the footprint a little bit smaller than the traditional one of running the books all the way out in a single layer to here. All right, um, that's about it for now. Um, the other thing we've got is we did get uh, we did find the uh, cinder pearls. I converted those to uh, blaze powder, so we now have enough for. Let's pull out the quest book. We now have enough to work on immersive engineering. Oh man, I haven't done this. So I I've finished my coke oven. Uh, bricks, but I never uh, opened this up, so I'm going to check that, and then I'm going to claim my engineer's hammer and engineer's manual, and then I did this. I've got the coke bricks, 27 of 27, and I made it already, so I can claim that, get a loot chest, bad me, a man of steel ingot, or probably multiples. Yeah, eight mana steel ingots. I'll take it. I might have a use for that. Um, actually, this is good timing because um, 
The next, I just got another book, and another thing I can show you in case you haven't used it before is the Akashic Tome. So let's make one of those real quick since I'm starting to collect lots of instruction books from all of these mods that are in this mod pack. So I have some more, I have some books. Not enough though, I need to get a stack of books going. And I have some bookshelves. And what we're going to make is a combined book of the Akashic Tome. A little infinity symbol on it. And it is a book and a bookshelf. So this is another perfect thing to get once you uh, get your silk touch on your pickaxe, if that's the way you choose to go. And uh, start working on enchantments. So how this bad boy works is that if you right click it, it'll show you the books you have. Right now it doesn't have any, um, but if we go here and put it there, and let's say we put our engineer's manual that we just got for immersive engineering, and do that, and actually let's go ahead and see where my Tinker's book is. Throw that in there too. So again, we're gonna take this, throw in materials in you, pull it out, and now if I right click on it, let me do it someplace where you can see better. Materials in you, engineer's manual. So I can pick one and the book now says uh, Akashic Tome engineer's manual and I can open it up and use it. Uh, and if I want to um, get back to the Akashic Tome and use a different one, I left click out into space and it turns back into the Akashic Tome. Pick the other one, boom, engineer's manual, left click into space, and now we're back to this. So with this mod pack having dozens, like a couple dozen at least, mods in it, I'm sure I'm going to end up with like 20, 30 books. So it's good to get this thing going. I don't think I'm going to put my, in, my basic quest book in it. Um, just because I know I'm going to want to use it back and forth all the time and I don't need to switch all the time. Um, but anyway, so we got credit for that and now we really want to uh, make blast bricks so we can start making steel. And so we need some nether bricks. I forgot about that. So we will have to go to the nether, but getting nether bricks is real easy. I can just step in, grab a bunch of nether rack, and step out. So that's no big deal. And actually, I think we have enough right now already. Because um, if we remember, this fort started with a cauldron surrounded by um, eight nether rack. Um, so we have that eight nether rack. And if I remember right, you just bake them. Yep. Um, but we're going to need to make nine recipes of it. So we're going to need like considerably more nether rack. So we'll just go there and get some. So it looks like I'm finally going to be forced to go to the nether. I don't know why it bothers me so much. It's just, uh, again, that place was pretty nasty in the vanilla days. Um, when you first went there, it was sort of a shock. Nowadays, it's probably pretty easy. There's so many good, better ways to get around. I got slime boots for falling. Um, etc. etc. So everything's probably fine. I'm just not used to the nether. And I peeked into it in my other game and uh, it has changed a lot because of biomes of plenty I assume. So um, I wasn't exactly sure what was going on and what I should watch out for and I got attacked by things I had never seen before. So I need to uh, do some research and go carefully through that. But I think that's what we're going to do next time. Um, I opened this up, but I didn't really talk about it. We've got plenty of honey coming along now. We've got uh, plenty of wax. We're back up to a full stack of slime balls. Um, so that's going to be like 16 slime crystals worth, 17 if you count these. So we've got plenty of slime going on. All right, well, I think I've babbled enough for one episode. Um... So we got some things done. We got uh, some cinder pearls. 
uh, got some bookshelves, got our enchanting table set up. Uh, so I'm going to fiddle around a bit more with that and uh, burn off some more of this experience. Um, I might set up, a, well, I guess I can, I guess I can make books out of wood and string and I've already got some um, industrial hemp cooking. So I might make some more books off camera and uh, play around with enchantments a bit more, start building a library of gear and books that I want to put on better gear once I get it. And maybe I'll start piling that onto some um, diamond gear now. Or maybe I'll wait. I don't know. If I have to go to the nether, I might, might as well get some decent gear going. Um, yeah, so this is a good stopping point. And uh, if you're watching and you're watching this series, thank you. I hope you find it interesting. And um, I will talk to you later. Bye.